Hello, everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at a whole number of modifications, uh, including properties and uh, some application uh, questions. Uh, first, we have a multiplication here, three times five. And uh, we want to make sure uh, students understand the meaning of multiplication. Uh, we know this is equal to 15. Uh, first of all, multiplication actually is the same number addition. In other words, the nature of multiplication is addition. It just a little bit special. It's the same number uh, addition. So I can write three times five as three fives. So five plus five plus five. So what do we get? We got 15, right? Or I could write uh, three times five as five threes. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three. What do we get? We get 15. See, so this is the nature of multiplication, which is just same number addition. So whenever in the real life, whenever you need to add same number again and again, you just multiply them together, depend on how many of that particular number you have. For example, you go shopping and uh, you buy, buy an item, which is priced at three, say three dollar fifty cents each, and you want to buy five of them. So how much is the total cost? So each one costs you two dollar fifty cents. I want to buy five. You it's going to cost you five of those two dollar fifty cents, right? Two dollar fifty, two dollar fifty. Instead of adding them together five times, why not just use a two dollar fifty times five? Same number addition, right? Okay, now let's look at some properties of multiplication. This operation, and the first one is called commutative property of multiplication. Uh, basically, it says when you multiply. And the order of those two factors, as with the number uh, in the multiplication, each number in the multiplication is called a factor, a factor. So the order of those factors appear in the multiplication doesn't make a difference. In other words, you can switch between these two numbers without changing the result. And that is a no, no surprise because for addition, we also have community property, right? Three plus five equals five plus three. And this uh, multiplication also has the same property because multiplication is just a special addition, same number addition. So they have same property. Three times five equals equal five times three. Order doesn't make a difference. Now let's look at how to use this property so that we can do things a little bit faster, more efficiently. Now we have this example, 25 times 37 times four. If we just do it, do it from the left to the right, you would have to multiply these two together. And if you use, uh, do it manually, it will take a little bit of time, right? After you get, the result of the first multiplication, then you use the, that answer multiplied by four to get your final answer. So you take a little bit of time. But if you realize that you can use this community property to make it faster, you will do this. Since the order doesn't matter, I can multiply this two together first, and that's 100. 37 times 100, 3,700, I can answer in no time.
So let's just verify this result is correct. So I actually multiply them together using uh, my calculator. Say 25 times 37 times four equals 3,700. So that's just a little bit faster. Order doesn't matter. We can multiply in any order you want in multiplication. Okay, now let's look at the second property of multiplication. And this one is called associated property of multiplication. Uh, probably some, some of you can recall if you watched uh, the previous video for addition property, that addition also has associated property, uh, just like in multiplication. What this means is that, let's look at the next page. Let's look at the meaning of this associated property of multiplication. So basically we have three numbers, multiply together A, B, C, A, B, C. They, they still have the same order. Now what this means is that when they use the parentheses, it just indicates that if you do the first multiplication first, then using the result, multiply the third factor, which is equal to, you multiply, the, you do the second multiplication first, then use the first factor and multiply the result. In other words, you can mod, do any multiplication first um, without a new result. The difference between the associated property and the uh, community property is that we don't change the order of these numbers, A, B, C, A, B, C. So let's look at the example here. And this one, 76 times four times 25. Certainly we can do the first operation, uh, first operation, which is multiplication first, and then using the result multiply by uh, 25. Or we can do the second multiplication first and uh, using the result multiply 76. Either way is okay, as indicated in here, without changing the result. But which one is better? You want to do it faster and accurate, right? And just if we multiply 4 and 25, which is 100, 100 times 76, it's just a 7600. So that's a little bit faster, right? That's why we, we want to take a look when we have some operations to see if we can do it more efficiently. We just don't do it blindly from left to the right. Okay, now the third property is called the multiplicative property of zero. So which says the product, which is the result of multiplication, the product of zero and the number is zero. In math language and multiplication between zero and the number equals zero. The order doesn't matter because we already know there's a community property of multiplication, right? This is zero multiplied by a number or number multiplied by zero, either way you get zero. And can be any number. Does that make sense? Uh, let's look at it. So let's use a particular example here, like four times zero. And uh, we already mentioned in the previous slides that multiplication, mod, multiplication is nothing more than special addition. We just add same number again and again. In this case, we have four zeros. So no matter how many zeros you add together, what you get, you still get zero. That's why this n doesn't matter, can be anything. You just have a bunch of zeros add, add together. Sure, you, you add it as a zero. You can also say you have zero, four. Zero, four is still zero. Zero, four means no four, and zero. Now, next one is called the multiplicative property of one, which says uh, when you multiply one and the number together, the result is that number. In mathematics language, one times a number equals that number, or that number times one equals that number. So let's use this next uh, example to illustrate that, to explain that. 
So five times one, according to this, is going to be equal to five. And we, we want to uh, make sure people understand why it is five. This is come down to the, again, that essential meaning of multiplication, which is the same number addition. Five times one really means five ones. Same number addition. What do we get? We get a five. That means a number multiplied by one is that number itself. You can also interpret this as one five. So five times one is just one five. One five. You don't add a five repeatedly because you only have one five. One five is five. I still got the same answer. So a number multiplied by one will be the number itself. Now, next one, this next one is more powerful actually. And we use it almost all the time in mathematics and algebra. This one is called distributed property. Uh, actually, the full name is distributed property of multiplication over addition or, or subtraction. But let's just call it a distributed property, which says if a sum of difference, that's why I said uh, distributed property of multiplication over addition or subtraction, right? If a sum of difference is multiplied by a number, each number inside the parentheses may be multiplied by the number outside the parentheses. Let's see uh, the, this, uh, this whole thing in mathematics language on the next page. So it goes like this. You have something outside the parentheses. You have either addition or subtraction inside parentheses. Then you can use this uh, number outside, multiply each one inside. Actually, no matter how many you have inside, as long as they plus minus together, you can just use this number outside, multiply each one inside. So A times B plus minus, it could be plus, could be minus. I just put them together to indicate two possible scenarios inside. So two times A, two ta I mean, A times B, <laughs> A times C. A, B, C can be any number. Now let's look at this to first demonstrate it and this property. And secondly, more importantly, we want to make sense out of this. Actually, we want to understand this is the reason this is working. Uh, first, this is just demonstration of this property itself. So I have three plus five inside and I have a number outside. According to this property, we can use the number outside, multiply each one inside. So two times three, two times three plus two times five. And literally it's just distribution, distributed to each one inside. Now, uh, let's make sense uh, out of this. First, according to the order of operations, that means uh, which says we need to do operations inside the parentheses first. So if we do this first, three plus five, it is eight, it is eight. So essentially on the left-hand side, we get two times eight, which is 16. Now, what does it mean two, time, uh, two times eight? We know the answer is 16, but what is the meaning of two times eight? But remember, ID, uh, multiplication is just a special addition, same number addition. So two times eight really means you have eight twos added together. Two plus two plus two plus two and so on. You have eight twos added together. Now let's look at what's in the right hand side. Two times three really means you have three tools added together, right? Two plus two plus two. That's the meaning of two times three. And two times five really means you have five tools added together. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two. So you have three tools. Later on, you have five tools and they add together how many tools you have. Three tools plus five tools, you have eight tools. Exactly the same meaning as in the left-hand side. That's why it is equal. That's why it is working. 
So sure, the final answer is 16. That's just a uh, working property. So next time you can distribute the number outside parentheses to each one inside, as long as you have plus or minus inside the parentheses, you can do that distribution. Now let's look at some examples using this distributed property. Uh, this is our first one and uh, multiplication. Basically, when we do multiplication, uh, we use uh, each digit in the second number, multiply each digit in the first number. Uh, even though in this uh, particular example, we only have one digit in the second number, it, it could be multi-digit. You do, you do it the same way. So two times four is eight, and two times three is a six. So answer is six, uh, 68. Now let's look at how we can do it using distribution property. So now I'm going to rewrite this two times 34 as two times 34 is a 310 plus four, that's 34, right? So 30 plus four, 310 is 30. 30 plus four, and you know this is correct. So guess what? Since we have this addition inside the parentheses, we have number outside the parentheses, we can use that uh, distributive property of multiplication, right? Distributed two to each number inside the parentheses. Now we have two times 30 plus two times four, and this is 60. And this is eight. So we get a 68. So imagine, actually, you can do this in your head without doing this, uh, all of this uh, work on paper. As long as you know this three is in the tens place, we learned the place value before. This three really means a 30. So two times 30 is 60, two times four is eight, that's 68. You can do this in your head. Instead of doing it this way, Look at the meaning of each digit. Two times three, that is a 60, because the three really means 30. Two times four is eight, 68. Now let's look at another example. So this time we're gonna multiply this two together. So first digit, first number is 503, 503. Multi multiplied by 62. So we do multiplication. Now the general process is that you want to use each digit in the second number, multiply each digit in the first number. So let's do that. Two times three is six. Two times zero is zero. Two times five is 10. Now pay attention to the second digit. Six times three is 18. We are going to write down eight, and uh, we are going to also indicate that, that carry of one. So the question is, where do we put that eight? Three times six is 18. Do we put it underneath the six, underneath zero, this zero, or this one? The answer is we put it underneath the first zero here. Why? Because this six is in the tenth place tens place. It really means 60. When you multiply six by this whole thing uh, on the top, really means how many 60s you have, how many tens you have this in tens place. That's why we put it underneath fourth zero, which is in the tens place. Remember how we add number together? We put numbers, uh, we put those digits with the same place value in the same column, right? That's what's happening here. That's what's happening here. This is a tenth place. We put results starting from tenth place. So six times three is 18. Uh, carry of one. Six times zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. Now six times uh, five is 30. Now we add this digit together. Well, ran out of room, right? So let's put this answer on the side. Six plus zero, there's nothing here. Six 
8 plus 0 is 8. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1 and 3. So we got 31,186. Let's double check using calculator. 503 times uh, 62 equals 31,186. So 31,186. So you may, you may say, hey, why not just use a calculator? It's easier. Sure, it's, it can give you answer way faster. But the problem is this. Whenever we want to learn something, especially when we learn something new, we want to really understand it before we use calculator later to make things happen faster. And the reason is very simple. If you don't fully understand things and you use calculator, you can get a wrong answer very fast. That's why we want to understand how to do it without a calculator first. After we understand it, we, we can use a calculator to make it happen fast. And you get a exercise problem. This is the first one in this video. I remember as in uh, previous videos, and uh, I will have answer to this exercise problems uh, in the comment area below the video. Let's look at the next uh, topic. Now we want to see how to estimate the product. Sometimes we have, especially when we have big numbers multiplied together, we want to do a quick uh, estimation to see what the answer looks like. So that once we get the actual answer, we know if, if it is reasonable. Sometimes if your actual answer is way bit different from your estimation, you could you could make some mis uh, you could have made some mistake right, uh, for that actual answer because the act, the act, actual answer and the estimated answer should be close reasonably close. So how do we do the estimation in the multiplication then? And basically, you just uh, run each factor, which is the number involved in multiplication, to the first. Uh, to the to the very first non-zero digit. So you just run it to to a number so that it only has one non-zero digit. You do this for every factor in your multiplication, then multiply them together. So let's look at this example three. We want to first do a quick estimation, and then we want to actually multiply these two together to see what we get. So run each number so that it only has one non-zero digit. Uh, for the first number is this. When we run it, this is still four because the next digit to the right is uh, smaller than five. So we replace all of these four digits with zeros. So we got 40,000 actually. And the second number, if we run it as the first digit, just like in the first one, uh, we just replace this three with zero because this digit is smaller than five, we get 7,000. So basically 40,000 times 7,000. When we multiply numbers with trillion zeros, actually you only need to multiply the actual numbers because each zero represents a 10. So four times seven, that's a 28. How many zeros we have? We have seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our estimate is 280 million. Now let's look at actual, actual result, okay? And we have 42,109 times 7,104, uh, 104. Multiply them together, let's say if I have enough room. Later on, we double check using calculator. Uh, four times nine, 36, and the here is the three. Four times zero is zero, plus three, that's a three. Four times one, that's a four. Four times two, that's eight. 
four times four, that's 16. Now zero multiply anything is zero, right? So you can skip this, or if you don't want, you can just multiply them together, the all zeros. Don't forget to put your answer underneath, starting from the tens place, because zero is in the tens place. But how many digits we have? One, two, three, four, five. So three, four, five. Now the third digit, one times each of this, one times anything will not change anything. You still get all of the digits, but you put those underneath hundreds place, which is this place, one, two, three. Once tens hundred, right? Nine, zero, one, two, four. Last digit, seven times nine, sixty-three. That is in the is is the fourth digit. One, two, three, four here. Uh, sixty-three. So carry is a six. Let's just write it on the side. And seven times zero is zero. Zero plus six is a six. And seven times one is one. Seven times two is 14. Carry is one. Seven times four, 28, 29. Now let's add them together to see the final answer. Let's look at the final answer. Six, three, uh, four plus nine, 13, carry one, eight plus three, 11, that's 12, and carry one, six, seven, 13, 14, carry is one. One is zero, one plus two, three, four, five. And this four plus four is eight, 298, 298 million, 542,336. Uh, now let me double, double check quickly to see if I made any calculation mistake. Uh, the 7104, that's right, 36, and the uh, carry is a three, four times zero, and plus three is three. Four times one is four. Four times two, that's eight. Then four times four is 16. Now third digit, one times nine is nine. Uh, one times zero is zero. One times one is one. One times two is two. One times four is four. Then the last digit, seven times nine and uh, 63, that's here, uh, carries a six, uh, seven, uh, I mean, seven times zero is zero plus six, that's a six, and seven times one, that's seven. Well, I made a mistake, see? Seven times one is seven. I don't know why I wrote one. That's why sometimes I need double check. Everybody made a mistake. I don't make mistakes, right? And seven times two, that's 14, carries one. Four times eight, and that's 28, plus carry, that's 29. So that's, this will change everything here. Now we have uh, 14, when we add this uh, three together plus carry, so this carry one here. One plus two, that's three. Three plus, uh, Seven is ten plus this one is my eleven, so this should be one. And we have carry that makes this nine. So final answer is two hundred ninety nine million one hundred forty two thousand three hundred thirty six. Let's double check with a calculator. Forty two one zero nine times. Uh, 7,104 equals 299,000,000, uh, 299,142,336. So very good. So you can see for such a big number, 280 million and 299 million, the difference is not that big. So it's kind of close. Now let's move on to our next. Uh, Topic, solve application problems involving multiplication. 
uh, as in any mod, uh, any application problems, the basic approach is that we want to understand the information in the description. Then we derive a strategy to answer the questions. So that's a general approach. You don't want to jump to the calculation uh, too fast. And that is a common mistake for so many students, especially when you move on to the higher level, that's going to be a big issue because when you have more complex problems, there's no way you can just do calculations to get an answer without a, a logical thinking, okay, without developing a strategy. Let's do this uh, uh, strategy development as early as we can. Then you have very good habit. Uh, you are going to form your own approach to solving your education problems. Okay, let's look at this example four. It says the human, uh, the human heart, the human heart averages about 70 beats each minute. A, or I guess we have more than one question here. A, how many times does the heart beat in an hour? So we, we are given that each minute it will beat 70 times. So how many times it will beat in an hour? So the nature of this uh, question is this. You get 70 beats in a minute. For the next minute, you get another 70 beats, uh, uh, another minute, another 70 beats, 70, 70, 70, 70. They ask us how many times in total uh, your heart going to beat in an hour, right? That in an hour, we have 60 minutes. Each minute, we are going to get 70 bits. You get 60 of the 70 bits. And by that, we understand it has to be multiplication because we already understand the essential meaning of multiplication, which is same number addition. 70, 70, 70, 70, we have 60 of those. So now we know how to do it. 70 each minute, 70 bits each minute, and we've got 60 of those. So multiply them together, six times seven, 42. Each of the treating zero means 10. So we have two of them. So you got 4,200 bits in an hour on average for a human being. So that's our first question. Now move on to the second one. Yeah, we have second one. Uh, how many times does the heart beat in a week? So we already done uh, how many times it will beat in, in, in an hour, right? 4,200 of them. So let's say in a week, we, we, our strategy is very similar. It's just a repeatedly adding uh, 70, 70, 70. Uh, so the difference is that, is that this time we have way more minutes in a week than in an hour, right? Otherwise, other, other than that, the, the, the basic logic is the same. So let's start with 70, that's for one minute, one minute, 70 bits, one minute. So in an hour, we have 60 of this. So if I multiply 60, this is a whatever you, uh, we get, even though we already know this 4,200, but think about in terms of logic, not in terms of numbers, okay? No matter what this is, this represents number of bits in one hour, in one hour. How many hours we have in a day? We have 24 hours. So if I, I multiply 24 again, this is how many bits in one hour, this multiply 24, that's how many bits in 24 hours, which is how many bits in a day. So whatever this is, whole thing, represents how many bits in, in one day. How many days we have in a week? We have seven, so we have seven of this times seven. So whatever it is, is our final answer. So this time I just go ahead and use a calculator. And the, the, the more important part is you understand why we do this multiplications. So 70 times 60 times 24, then times seven. Oh, that's a lot of bits. Seven zero five six zero zero. So three digits, comma. 
Now you get 705,000 and 600 bits. That's the total number of bits in a week. And you'll get this exercise problem, the second one in this video. Uh, let's move on uh, to look at example five. We have another application problem here. Uh, to get into a certain restricted building, a person must enter a code. The code box has two digital windows. Uh, the illustration is on the next page. The first window can contain any number from one to five. The second window can contain any letter from, one, from A to Z. Only uppercase letters appear. So what this means is that uh, if if you you all you if we also could have lowercase letter that will give give us fifty two different uh, possibilities in the second uh, digital window, right? By restricting letter to be uh, yeah, upper, uppercase, and we just know there are only twenty six possible uh, letters in in the second window. So how many possible codes are there in all? So basically, this is the illustration. You have two digital windows. The first one will hold numbers from one to five. Yeah, either, uh, either one could uh, appear in the first window. And the second window will hold capital letters uh, from A through Z. Any letter can appear in the second window. And the question is, how many codes, codes are possible? How many combinations, right? So let's do a little bit analysis. Let's just uh, pretend that we only have one in the first window. Then let's look at how many possible codes with one being in the first window. Now, since we have 26 possible letters in the second window, you have already 26 combinations. For example, if this is A, you get one A. If this is B, you get one B. If this is C, you get one C. So we have 26 uppercase letters in, in the alphabet, right? So that gives us 26 codes, different codes. But what if th this uh, first window is two? So we get another 26 codes, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2, 2D, and so on. And we have five of this. So each digit combined with these 26 letters and gives us say 26 codes, but we have five digits here. So that's 526. And that's multiplication. 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, right? That's why we multiply in the factor. When we multiply, we get 130 for this one. So that, that means 130 different calls. If we multiply 5 times 6, 30, carry 3, 2 times 5, 10, plus 3, that's 13. So we get 130 different calls. Now move on to the next topic. And this one is called exp exponential operation. This is a very powerful operation. Now first, we are, let's understand some uh, uh, essentials. Let's look at this example six. In this case, I multiply two by itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I multiply two by itself seven times, I get 128, but we only have seven tools multiplied together. How about you have say 1,000 tools multiplied together? Are we going to write it out like this, two times two times two times two until we have 1,000 tools? That is really tedious at, at least, but it's almost impossible to do that because it takes a lot, lot of time, a long time and a lot of room on paper. But if you miss one, you're totally wrong. So we need a way to represent this uh, a same number of multiplication in a more compact format. And that is called exponential operation. And we write it in this format. So, so we have seven tools multiplied together by itself. Two is the number that we are going to multiply by. And seven, just how many times we do that? And this tool in this writing, basically the way we write it, 
write out the number uh, then multiply by itself, and then you put a smaller number on the top right corner to indicate how many times you want to do that. In this case, it's seven. And this tool is called the base of this exponential operation. And the seven, seven itself is called exponent. It indicates how many times you want to multiply this number by itself. So it's a much compact, much efficient way to represent this kind of special multiplication. Imagine, and that, that example I just mentioned, if you multiply two by itself 1,000 times, instead of seven, just replace seven with 1,000. How efficient is that, right? Okay, now let's look at, oh, forget one thing here. So I almost forget. How to read this? How to read it? We read it as two to the power of seven. That's how we read a exponential operation. Two to the power of seven. Sometimes people read it the other way, which is also fine. Two to the seventh power. They are, they are the same. They are the same. That's how we read it. Now let's do this uh, next example evaluation. We want to evaluate three to the fourth power. So three to the fourth power, which means you multiply this base by itself four times. Three times three times three times three. So three times three is nine. Three times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81. Remember we have uh, associated property in the uh, for multiplication. You can multiply it together, you can multiply it together and then multiply uh, final result together. So three to the power of four is 81. Another example, so we just do all of these uh, examples to make sure people uh, master these uh, basics in different operations and like multiplication, like exponential operation. All of these are your foundation to move forward. Okay, example eight, we want to write this in the exponential form. It's an exponential form is that you have a base, you have number on the top right corner, right? So this five multiplied by itself. So five is the base. How many times it multiply itself? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six is the exponent. So we can say now five times five times five times five times five times five equals five to the power of six. So we just write it in the exponential form. And you get exercise problem, write this in the exponential form. Now, new topic, power, uh, powers of 10. When an exponential form has a base of 10, and we call that power of 10. It, it, it means this uh, base being 10 is kind of special. We give it a dedicated name, powers of 10. Uh, some examples of power of 10 say they all have uh, 10 as a base, right? So 10 to the second power, we also call it 10 square. And 10 to the third power, we also call it a 10 cube, C-U-B-E. They are very popular. That's why they have their own names, 10 square, 10 cube. Otherwise, you can just call it 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 4, and so on. So this really means 10 times 10, right? Two tens multiply together, that's 100. Three times multiply together here. And that's 1,000. Four tens. That's 10,000. I guess you already see the pattern. That's our goal for this example. Uh, five tens. Five 
That's 100,000. Last one, six tens. And that's my million. You see the pattern? So powers of 10 is a special. The final answer, if we compare the final answer to this exponent itself, so we can just realize that this exponent indicate how many zero you have after the first digit of one. This two, you have two zeros. This is a four, you have four zeros. This is six, you have six zeros. So the next time, next time, we, if we have power of 10, we don't need to go through this middle side, we just write the result direct. Pattern recognition is, uh, is very powerful, very useful uh, in mathematics. Now, example eight, write this number in expanded no notion using powers of 10. I remember we, we had a, a example, maybe two, where we write a number in the expanded form, right? Maybe in the very first video. And in that case, we will write this uh, some, something like one million, because it's a million place, two, uh, one million plus two, 100,000, because two, 100,000, it, it goes like this. One million plus two hundred thousands because it's digit two in the hundred thousands place plus three ten thousands and so on. This is the expanded form, but this time we want to write this in expanded form in terms of powers of ten. How do we do that? Basically, we represent this uh, place value names in, in, in using powers of 10. So this one, digit two, uh, this digit one in the median, uh, in the median uh, place, which is this to the to the to the sixth power, to the sixth power. So we will write it as one times 10 to the six for this part plus digit two, two times 10 to the fifth power, because fifth power represents 100,000. Look at that, fifth power, 100,000. And plus three, that's 10,000, which is fourth power. And plus nine, which is in the thousand place, and that's third power of 10, plus a four in the hundred place, which is second power of 10. We don't need to do zero because zero times anything will be zero. The last one, five times, this is the one's place. One's place and has a zero power. You see, this is in square is in the third digit square 10, 10 to the second power four is in the third digit third digit but it's two first digit is going to be 10 to the zero power because 10 tens place is 10 to the one 10 to the one is 10 right tens place and this one going to be one's place what is going to be one one's place actually is 10 to the zero 10 to the zero power you have one let's let's just uh, Confirm that so that everybody feel comfortable. 10 to the power of zero equals one. And later on, uh, if we have that opportunity in this course, uh, pre-algebra, and I will explain the actual meaning of 10 to, uh, 10 to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero equal to one. And we want to know why is that, the reason for that. So this is 10 to the power of zero, which is one. Usually we don't write power of zero and we just write one. So five times one. So that's expanded form. Now move on to the next, uh, next example.
Uh, also, I just had a problem for expanding the form. Now let's look at the example nine. Maybe this is the last example. Let me, yeah, this is the last example for this video. Example nine, uh, Dahlia plans to stand a new wood deck. The deck is 15 feet wide by 20 feet long. So it looks like it's a rectangle. What is the area of the deck? Now, I'm going to de develop this uh, formula for rectangle area so that it makes sense to you. I know maybe you already know it by looking at the textbook. And uh, the thing is this, when you learn a formula, you really want to understand it. You uh, uh, actually it makes sense to you so that you, you never forget that. That's the first thing. Secondly, more importantly, you get a very good habit uh, of learning by understanding things, okay? And that's the reason I want to show you why we have uh, the formula and that you see in the text in, in the textbook. So I have a rectangle. Rectangle is a four-sided figure where opposite sides are parallel. So these two are parallel and these two are parallel. And also opposite sides are equal in length. And in addition to all of those, and the adjacent two sides are perpendicular. That means they form right angles, 90 degree angles. Say, so let's call this side length. Let's call the adjacent side perpendicular side width. Let's use uh, some uh, spe uh, specific numbers uh, to show the formula. It's easy to understand with specific numbers. So let's say I have three feet long for the length. I have two feet long for the width of this rectangle. Now, this is what I do. I'm going to divide this length into three equal parts. So divide them into three equal parts, I try my best. So each part will have a length of one foot. That's just true. I do the same thing for the width. I divide it into two equal parts. Basically, I put a mark in the middle. Now, each, each part is a foot also. Now, let's look at what, what is this a small unit shaded area. I just shaded one foot. One foot, one foot, one foot. All four sides equal and they have 90 degree angle also for all of this. So what do we call, call this a shape? It is a square. It is a square measured by one foot. It's a one foot square. So the area for this shaded area naturally is one foot square. We call it one square foot. And that is the unit of area if we measure it in foot. So how many of these uh, uh, squares, unit squares in the first row? In the first row, the second row. We have three of those identical ones, right? Apparently in the first row, the total area for this first row is three square feet. Square feet, square feet, square feet, three square feet. And how many rows do we have? We have two rows, we have two of this. That's why we multiply, right? Two, uh, I mean three, another three. And we multiply them together, we get six, six square feet. We know that's the correct answer. Basically we can count it six of square foot, six square foot. But more importantly, if we use A to represent the area of this rectangle, where does the three come from? Is the total length. So that's a length. Where does the tool come from? It's total width. So length times width. And that's a formula you see in any geometry textbook. So in other words, to calculate the area of a rectangle, you multiply length by the width. Okay, very good. Now let's, uh, now there's no more example. 
And this is an exercise problem you have. That's the last one for this video. And that's all for this uh, for this video. Uh, I see you guys in the next video.